Because I'm doing this the whole time not knowing if I'm even in focus. Hello, I hope you're all well. Today we're looking at part two of developing film where we actually do the developing. So the last video went about what the prep you needed. This video is actually going to be about the developing itself. So currently I'm just waiting for my chemicals to get to temperature. The magic number I'm looking for is 25 degrees Celsius. We're currently too warm at 28. So we're going to look at that once we start getting the temperature. All right, so the first thing we need to do when we're developing our film is do what's called a pre-soak. So that is just where you run it through with water. It's the same temperature as all the chemicals you need just to get it washed through. So our pre-soak will be running for three minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Your timer is set for three minutes. So what we do is we have to continuously invert the tank for the first 30 seconds. And now it's up, we just leave it. Give it a tap on the top just to make sure there's no air bubbles. And then we agitate it once every 30 seconds. Okay, the time is up now. So I'm going to pour that and you're going to see the water coming out in a slightly tinted colour. So the next stage afterwards, we start with the developer. Now in this case at 25 degrees Celsius, the developer needs to be in 13 minutes. Okay, hey Siri, set a timer for 13 minutes. Your timer is set for 13 minutes. And again with this, we continuously invert the tank for the first 30 seconds. Do be careful when doing this because if you get it on your hands it is an irritant. You should be wearing gloves, but given everything that's going on right now, gloves probably go to more important things. And then as the instructions it just says to agitate every 30 seconds. One thing I've also done as well is I've written two extra films on my, all my bottles so I know that I've developed two more films of them. So we're going to pour that back into the bottle very slowly. Being, trying to be careful not to get any on our hands like I just did. So now we move on to the bleach. Tank, put the lid on it, get the bleach out, and the bleach at 25 degrees is going to go for six minutes. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the timer whilst we're pouring in. Hey Siri, set a timer for six minutes. Your timer is set for six minutes. And the bleach we don't have to invert continuously, we just have to agitate it every 30 seconds. Okay, so that's the bleach done. So again we pour that in carefully. So now we move on to the fixer. The fixer in this case is seven minutes and again only needs to be agitated every 30 seconds. Hey Siri, set a timer for seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes and counting. Okay, the last part we've had the stabiliser. 
which goes in for 1 minute and 30 seconds. So a nice quick one. Hey Siri, set a timer for one and a half minutes. Okay, your timer is set for 1 minute and 30 seconds. And again, this just has to be agitated once every 30 seconds. And that is the stabiliser done. Now one thing to note, I found the stabiliser comes out very frothy when you're pouring it back in. So this is one just to be careful if you need you take it even slower than the rest of them when pouring it back into the bottle. One thing I am going to do is just give it a wash with just some water. Just to get the last of anything off of it. Sorry, that's my wife climbing under the tripod. One, it's not as funny, two, it's not as true. And now we go to drying. Uh, basically just hold it and point it at it. <laughs> I'm pointing it at you. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Preferably stand a bit further away. Okay, so now we're in the drying stage. First thing I'd recommend is drying off your tank. These things are a right pig to open when they're wet because you've got such a smooth plasticky surface. So what I'd recommend, get it dry, get your towel, and use that to open up your tank. I'm just gonna pop that to the side for the moment. Now what we've got, if you can point it to there please, is I've got a very ramshackled assembly of just these clothes clips, which I used to hang the film off of with this upside down hangy thing technical term. Mm -hmm. At some point I have no doubt that I'm going to knock this off into the bath because it's happened every time. Um, I'm just going to put it out there, it's not focusing on you. <laughs> well, Sony sort your shit autofocus out, even though you have because this is an A7 Mark II and they've done many revisions since then. So, all we need to do, take the film out and we're just going to get the end and we're going to clip it onto one of these hangers. So we're just going to let it unfurl. Told you. Every bloody time. So you've got to be very careful in this part. So I'm going to unfurl the shit. Sorry. <laughs> Stop laughing. There we go, so we're going to unfurl it. Now you're not meant to touch the film um, before it's dry, like I just have. So now we've got it unfurled, I'm just going to put one of these on the bottom as well, just to keep it as straight as possible. One thing I cannot underestimate the importance of is leaving it to dry, which sounds really stupid, but just leave it, because I'll put some examples of what happens when you don't and you're impatient like I am, and it goes horrendously wrong. Um, there we go. So we're going to take our clip, put it on the top. One thing you can also get is squeegees uh, that specific, specifically made for this. I don't own any. So we're just going to unfurl it down. And again, we're just going to take our clip on the bottom and do but, and now we wait for quite some time.
one of the things I kind of mentioned about earlier as well was the importance of the drying phase. So these strips of film have been drying for about two, three hours, something like that. One of the film cameras I own is this Canon Canonette here. I bought it for spares or repairs, for, well not spares or repairs, I bought it untested from eBay, paid just shy of 20 quid for it. Um, it works okay, there was just a little bit the focus was out. So my the first real life film I ran through, I just walked around Portsmouth, uh, Portsmouth City Centre, I got really excited, I got home, I shot and developed the film all in one day and I was really eager to just see what the results looked like so I rushed the drying process, I took screen cleaner cloths and like wiped down the film and that just left loads of dust and tissue and all sorts which is now stuck onto the film forever for what I can see so don't rush your drying. So now we're into the most interesting and fun bit of the whole process, scanning, which is incredibly slow and time consuming and very laborious. Um, I'm using an Epson V370 scanner, uh, upsides, it's fairly inexpensive. I bought this one second hand on eBay for £70, something like that. Um, downsides, it does not have dust removal and uh, the biggest thing is dust removal for me as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there are bits you can do to prep and to assist you. For example, using a rocket blower uh, to get as much dust as you can, cleaning the scanner beforehand as well, um, but it is difficult. One thing that I also don't own, and I think I alluded to in the previous bit, was a squeegee. I don't own a film squeegee, so that means that a lot of my film actually has watermarks, something which I just need to invest in, to be honest with you. But I'm just going through. Uh, this is the first reel, or the first six shots of the first reel, this is Kodak Pro Image 100. This is also the latest version of Epson scanning software which literally got updated fairly recently. Uh, so this is the first time I'm actually using it. So things you can do in the software, uh, you can rotate them so they're all facing the same way, you can do custom file names, so I always name mine based on the camera I'm using. Let's give them a scan. Might be worth taking up like a video game or something in the meantime because uh, it's going to be a while. So whilst this is scanning, I'm going to talk you through. So I scan these at 4800 dpi, so that's 4800 dots per inch. Uh, that gives me something around, I think, a 12-ish megapixel image, which is more than enough for this. Uh, with 35 millimeter, that's a pretty decent DSLR image um, equivalent. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, you're literally just going to be waiting around for quite some time. There are other ways to go about. I'd recommend if you can, trying to get a scanner with dust reduction, something called ISRD, which is a fantastic bit of software, a um, bit of hardware built into the scanner. You can replicate it, but otherwise, like with software bits and bobs, it's laborious and long. And I'll be honest, I don't tend to do dust cleaning up on mine, mainly because I've never really had a film image that I thought, oh man, that needs to be blown up, like huge. Uh, I tend to shoot film more recreationally, so I use things like my Sony mirrorless camera for my professional work, anything that I do that involves like client-based things like that. Film is my fun photography, as my way of being able to switch off and just have fun and shoot and practice. Um, and in itself is a massive wormhole that you could dive very, very deeply into. So now you've got your images scanned, we can just open up your photo editor of choice drop all them in. What I'd recommend doing is when you're scanning, scan them as a lossless file or some something like, for, so for example I'm using a TIFF file so it's like a RAW essentially where you've just got that more control, that a lot more data there so you can actually do a lot more changes things like white balance and stuff like that you can just really correct for. I haven't done any corrections in the scanner itself I've done it all, I'm going to be doing it all in Darktable here and then what you will see now is the edited photos
So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, much like any aspect of photography, it, you can put as much or as little into it as you want. Um, I've gone out, so I think my total investment in kind of film developing, the scanner was £70, the dev tank, everything like that was 20 the chemicals were 50 a couple of other bits, so all in all about £140, which yes is a lot of money, but at the same time when you break that down into actually per developing, £140 for 100 reels of photos, it works out £1.40 per reel, so when you think of it like that, still in comparison to developing it somewhere else, it is a lot of time. Uh, scanning 36 photos has taken me probably about an hour and a half at 40 100 dpi. Uh, you can obviously scan it quicker, but you get less quality. But it depends, again, it's as much or as little as you want to put into it. Uh, there's no right or wrong really, but it's just kind of what works for you. I'm still having a massive learning curve of this, so as you will see, my photos are by no means perfect with regards to the process and the film developing side of things, but it's all about learning, and more importantly, it's all about having fun. I hope you have a good day.